Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to another RTDS Technologies webinar. Thank you so much for being here with us today. My name is Katie Sidwell from the Technical Sales and Marketing Team at RTDS, and I will be your host and moderator today for our webinar on new and improved IEC 61850 Goose features for the RTDS simulator. As usual, I have a couple of housekeeping notes before we get to our presentations and demo. Uh, please feel free to say hello in the chat widget of this webinar tool. Uh, let us know where you're joining us from. It's great to see some familiar and new names, if not your faces. And please use the Q&A widget, not the chat widget, for asking your questions throughout the webinar. We'll be doing a live Q&A at the end of the demo, so please ask questions all through the webinar. We'll try to get to your uh, questions via text, and we will cover a few out loud at the end. The slides are also available. They're in the handouts section. You can download a PDF of the slides. And we will be distributing this recording next week, uh, along with a Q&A document that summarizes all of the conversation we have today. And anyone listening will receive that automatically at the email address that was used to register for this webinar. If you have colleagues or friends who were not able to join us for the webinar today but would like to participate, this webinar is also available on demand at the RTDS Technologies website, so you can let them know. So I will start us off today with a fairly short presentation, about 10 minutes, giving you a bit of background on the technology and specifically on the communication protocol related facilities for the RTDS simulator. So if you're already familiar with our product and with the GTNet X2 card, that will be review. And you can tune in when my colleague Dinesh Gurusinghe jumps in with his presentation on our newest developments in IEC 61850 Goose namely the new Goose V7 model in RSCAD, the new IED configuration tool, or ICT, and our Goose analyzer tool. Uh, there will also be an informative RSCAD demonstration, which shows some of the configuration in action in the software tool, and of course, our live Q&A. So let's get into it. The IEC 61850 standard is an increasingly important component of modern protection systems and thus of protection testing. The standard defines communication protocols for substation IEDs and provides an overview of the communication architecture for substation automation systems. Around 2010, RTDS Technologies released its GTNet capabilities to allow users to incorporate IEC 61850 and 61850 compliant devices into the closed loop testing process. Our protection and automation team participates quite actively in industry working groups, such as the UCA International Users Group and IEC Technical Committee 57, which are focused on uh, the 61850 standard. So changes to the standard, to uh, commercially available protection devices, and user requirements and use cases are driving RTDS developments in the 61850 category. So I'll go into a brief backgrounder on our tool uh, and on EMT simulation in general if you're not familiar. The RTDS simulator and RSCAD software do electromagnetic transient or EMT simulation, and different types of power system simulation are required at different project stages or to meet different requirements. So load flow and transient stability analysis, for example, give you phasers around the fundamental frequency as an output, whereas EMT simulation provides a time-varying instantaneous value output a waveform like the one shown here that would match the current or voltage waveform if it were to be measured from the real system. So this is quite different from an RMS simulation. This allows for a greater depth of analysis over a wide frequency range and the ability to reproduce fast transients on the power system. And the higher the sampling frequency of the simulation, the higher frequency results you can accurately reproduce. The period of the sampling frequency or the distance between two consecutive uh, simulation outputs is called the time step, or delta t as shown here. And the typical time step for the RTDS simulator 
is in the 25 to 50 microsecond range. But if we want to represent the high frequency switching of power electronics, um, for example, for simulating converters for interfacing a battery to the grid, we need to use a smaller time step closer to the one to three microsecond range. What does it mean to operate in real time? When we say real time, we mean the computer needs to solve all of the equations for the network in real world time equal to or less than the simulation time step. And this means that the real time for a power system event to occur is equal to the simulated time. Offline EMT simulation programs run on standard PCs rather than using dedicated parallel processing hardware, so the time they need to complete these simulations is typically much greater. And that's one of the advantages of real-time simulation, efficiency. But beyond efficiency, the principal advantage of running simulations in real time is the ability to connect external hardware to the simulation and test it in a closed loop. Closing the loop means not only observing the response of a protection or control device to an imposed signal, but also interfacing that response back into the simulated network. And that's called hardware in the loop testing. It's only possible if we are updating the inputs and the outputs of our simulation continuously in real time. It's not possible with non-real-time modeling tools or with open loop testing tools like a relay test set, for example. And those open loop tools lack the flexibility to test multiple devices at once or to allow for detailed modeling of the network, for example, including power electronics. So it's very valuable for engineers to be able to test interoperability and interactions between different systems with real physical devices. Um, unfortunately, the complexity of systems with distributed energy and bi-directional power flow in distribution networks means that standard modeling and test practices can be blind to vulnerabilities in the system. So being able to reliably predict um, instabilities and other issues is the real value of HIL testing. To do nodal analysis on the power system with a 50 or 25 or one microsecond time step is very computationally intensive. And of course, the processing power required increases with the size and complexity of the network that you want to simulate. So to achieve this, the RTDS simulator is built on dedicated parallel processing hardware, our current hardware generation is based on IBM's Power8 multi-core processor, and we've developed it at the embedded level. So there's no underlying operating system. We run our executable code bare metal for higher efficiency. And we achieve modularity through core licensing. So the quantity of cores licensed on a given unit determines the size and complexity of the simulation it can run. There is a link between the user's PC running our software and the simulation hardware. In addition to the central processing hardware, we also require hardware to facilitate the interface between the devices under test and the real-time simulation. So these are our input and output devices. We have both conventional analog and digital based IO, as well as communication protocol based IO, which of course is the subject of today's webinar. Our communication-based I.O. card is called the GTNet X2, and this card facilitates bidirectional communication between the simulation and external devices via Ethernet. The card has two processors, which we call modules, and each module can run a network protocol in parallel. So the card can have two network protocols operating simultaneously. The available firmwares for the card are shown on this slide. So in addition to IEC 61850 Goose messaging, which is discussed today, it is also capable of sampled values simulation, SCADA protocols, DNP3, and IEC 6870-5-104. Uh, we have playback protocols for ComTrade or ASCII playback into the simulation, PMU protocol, Modbus, and also generic TCP and UDP socket communication. As shown in the diagram, the central processor communicates simulated data to the GTNet X2 card over fiber cable, and the GTNet X2 then sends standard compliant data packets over Ethernet, where external devices can receive them. And this also works for input into the simulation as well.
It's also possible to synchronize the real-time simulation with an external time reference, and that's done using this hardware, the GT Sync card. The GT Sync can accept external time reference inputs via 1 PPS, IEEE 1588 PTP, or iRigB. And if an external time reference is not available, the GT Sync card itself can provide a time reference via an internal 1 PPS source. Synchronization is required for synchrophaser testing, so for PMU uh, protocol streaming, and it's advantageous for sampled values. It can also be used for goose messaging. Here we can see what that whole setup would typically look like. We have an external GNSS clock, which is providing a time reference to the RTDS GT Sync card. And the GT Sync card is connected to the central processor via a fiber cable, which is on a dedicated port on the NovaCore. And that time reference is also being provided to two external IEDs. The RTDS simulator's GT Net card is receiving simulated data via fiber cable and putting them onto the local area network via Ethernet. And of course, the user's PC is also connected to the switch. From an IEC 61850-based protection testing perspective, this is what a typical interface might look like. So this gray box at the top represents the simulated portion of the testbed. We have a very simple simulated network. We are bringing voltages and currents out of the simulation from simulated instrument transformers via a sampled values protocol on the process bus. And that data is being sent to external relays. In this case, we have two relays. Those relays can send their trip and reclose signals via IEC 61850 Goose on the station bus, which is received by the GTNet uh, GSE protocol and communicated to simulated breakers. And breaker status can also be sent uh, out to the relays via Goose. If you're not familiar with our proprietary software, it's called RSCAD FX, and it provides a graphical user interface where the user can create their circuit, compile it, and run the simulation and retrieve data. Built into RSCAD FX is the configuration tool for IEC 61850 components of the real-time simulation testbed. So it's all part of our software. Uh, so when you see the demonstration today, Dinesh will be showing you how to configure components in RSCAD using the configuration tool. All right, without further ado, I'm happy to introduce Dinesh Gurusinghe, and he will take you through his technical presentation and the demonstration. Thank you, Katie. Hello, everyone. My name is Dinesh Gurusinghe from RTDS Technologies. I'm going to start off with an overview of IC61850 Goose communication using the RTDS simulator. As Katie already mentioned, the RTDS simulator supports several industry standard communication protocols using the GTNet X2 hardware. IC61850 Generic Object Oriented System Events or Goose is one of the most commonly used power system automation protocols to interface the simulator with external IDs such as relays. Over the years, the RSCAD master component library has carried a few versions of GTNet component, which run on GTNet hardware to interface the RTDS simulator to external IDs using IC61850 Goose communication. As some of you already know, in RSCAD 5, the most commonly used GSE components were GSE V5 and GSE V6. Both of these components share an integrated configuration tool called the SCD editor to carry out the required SCL configurations. With the initial release of RSCAD FX, we introduced the GSE V7 component. This is a brand new GSE component that comes with a new firmware. Both component and firmware operate fundamentally differently from their predecessors, that is GSE V5 and GSE V6 components. For the GSE V7 component, we introduce a modern IC61850 ID configuration tool called 
the ICT which replaces the old SCD editor. Introduction of these developments significantly broaden the flexibility, the scope and the capability of existing GSE implementations and mark an important milestone for IC61850 implementations in the RTDS simulator. Next, I am going to introduce salient features of the GSE V7 component. The GSE V7 component provides GOOS and MMS communications as per IC61850 8-1 edition 2 and edition 2.1 standards. With GSE V7 component, the user can simulate up to 4 IDs per 1 draft component. And for each IED, the user can build a generic IC61850 data model from inbuilt logical node database. One GSCV7 component can publish up to 16 streams simultaneously with up to 512 data items in total. Likewise, the GSCV7 component can subscribe up to 32 different GOOS streams, that is, 32 unique GOO streams from external IDs and up to 512 data items in total. The GSCV7 component also supports RTDS switch objects to simulate switch gear operations similar to the legacy GSCV7 components. Here it provides circuit breaker control via MMS communication. The new GSCV7 component also supports simulated GOOS and subscription monitoring or the ELGOS feature described in the IC61850 standard. Of course, it supports to publish and subscribe routable GOOS messages. For MMS communication, the GSCV7 component acts as an IC61850 MMS server device. Here, it supports both buffered and unbuffered reports. Next, I will compare features of the GTNet GSCV7 component with those of the legacy GSC component, GSCV6 and GSCV5 in particular, to further emphasize the novel features of the GSCV7 component. In terms of data binding, the legacy GSC components support only one type of generic logical node class, that is GTIO, for interfacing output data. The new GSCV7 supports logical node classes defined in IC61850 7-4 for interfacing output data. This allows meaningful data binding. For example, Let's consider a case where we want to publish a trip signal with the legacy GTNet GSC component. Data reference for a trip signal published with the legacy component may look like ID1, LD1, out GGIO1, IND1, STVAL. Here, the meaning or the context of the signal is lost by the use of GGIOs. In contrast, same trip signal can be mapped to ID1, LD1, PDRC1, TR general in GSEV7. Here, the use of the PTRC protection trip conditioning logical node class explicitly indicate to the outside world that the map signal is a trip command. This type of virtualized and object-oriented data mapping is one of the defining principles of the IC61850 standard. When configuring legacy components, configurations must be carried out in the SCD editor as well as the component itself. In GSEV7, almost all configurations are carried out in the ICT. Due to shared configurations, 
legacy GSC components and the SCL files generated by the SCD editor are attached to each other. Once originally configured, it is not easy to replace or move one without the other. In contrast, the GSC V7 component configured itself by reading the files generated by the ICT during compile time. This allowed to independently edit, move or reassign GSC components in the draft case. This is analogous to the transmission line calculation block in RSCAD draft. In addition, carrying out configurations in only one place, that is the ICT, is more convenient and intuitive. In legacy GSC components, data models of IDs are not flexible, whereas GSC V7 offers far greater flexibility in data models. For example, in GSC V7, the user can build their own data models by adding appropriate LDs and LNs and then enabling required data objects and data attributes based on application requirements. Legacy GSC components only support one IED and up to four LDs per component. The GSC V7 support up to four IDs per component and no rigid limit on number of logical devices per IED. You may even go beyond 10 logical devices per component. In terms of logical node instances, maximum number of logical node instances per IED in legacy GSC components is 64. In GSC V7, there is no rigid limit on number of logical node instances per IED. Therefore, the user can accommodate significantly more logical devices and logical node compared to legacy GSCs. Finally, in legacy GSC components, placement of datasets and goose control blocks is not configurable whereas it is far more configurable in GSC V7. The user can create their own datasets by selecting appropriate data objects and data attribute instances from the data model. Then the user can assign created datasets to one or more goose control block based on application requirements. This slide compares Goose publishing capabilities of legacy GSE components and the GSE V7 component. Firstly, legacy GSE components holds up to four datasets, that is one from each logical device for generic data publishing and one for switch gear operations per component. The GSE V7 component can holds up to 32 datasets per component in total, that is 8 per IED. Secondly, legacy GSC component, the GSC V6 for example, can publish up to 4 GOO streams for generic data publishing, that is one from each logical device and one for switch gear operations per component. Here, Datasets and goose control blocks are dependent on each other. The GCV7 can publish up to 16 streams per component. Here, datasets and goose control blocks are application independent. Thirdly, legacy GSC component can publish up to 256 data items in total per component, whereas GSE V7 can publish up to 512 data items in total per component. When considering subscribing capabilities, legacy GSE component can subscribe up to 16 goose streams per component, whereas GSE V7 can subscribe up to 32 goose streams per component. 
Similarly, legacy GSE component can subscribe up to 256 data items in total per component, whereas GSE V7 can subscribe up to 512 data items in total per component. IC61850 MMS or Manufacturing Message Specification is a client-server type communication protocol that provides services to transfer data. MMS communication provides connection for browsing the data model of the server device, reading and writing server data, performing control operations on the server device, and so on. The GSE V7 component functions as a MMS server and sending out report from the GTNet to a remote MMS client. This slide compares MMS capabilities of legacy GSE component and the GSE V7 component. Legacy GSE component, the GSE V6 component for example, only supports one report control block per component. This feature is only supported for switch gear operations. GCV7 component supports up to 16 report control blocks per component and reporting feature is application independent. In GCV6, report control blocks are not user configurable, whereas any user-created dataset can be used for reporting in GSCV7. Finally, one of the drawbacks in GSCV6 is the user cannot disable the MMS feature. Users always have to configure MMS signal in draft even when they are not of interest. In GSCV7, users can decide what features to enable including MMS feature. IED configuration tools can create an instance of an IEC 61850 IED by configuring information specific to the physical device that it represents. This can include building the data model, creating data sets and goose control blocks. Here I'm talking about goose control block and report control blocks, carrying out internal signal bindings, setting up network parameters, and so on. RSCAT IC61850 IED Configuration Tool, or the ICT, is the configuration tool for the GSE V7 component, where we can create and edit IC61850 related configuration files required. The user can use the RSCAT ICT to configure all GSE V7 components in the RSCAT draft case. We can use the ICT to build a standard IC61850 data models from the inbuilt logical node database. Next, you can configure GOOS and MMS communication of GDNet IDs using the ICT. Of course, you can bind inputs and outputs to RSCAT FS draft signals with the aid of the ICT. Another important fact is the ICT can add RTDS switch objects to simulate switch gear operations. The ICT also supports to configure GOOS subscription monitoring, that is, the ELGOS feature. In addition, the ICT can import non-RTDS SCL files, that is, ICD, CID, and SCD files, necessary for GOOS subscription configuration. Finally, the ICT can generate CID and other auxiliary configuration files for GSEV7 components. This slide compares the SCD editor and the ICT to emphasize advantages of the new ICT. Firstly, in SCD editor, each GSC component must be configured by launching the SCD editor individually multiple times. However, in the ICT, all the GSC components in the draft are configured in a 
single ICT project. In the ICT, a project is the counterpart of a RSCAD draft case which can contain multiple components. Secondly, the SCD editor generates one SCD files with all the IC61850 IEDs, configurations and so on. The ICT generates CID files for individual GSEV7 components and other auxiliary configuration files including IDF, IAF and IPF files to execute simulation case. More details of CID and auxiliary files will be discussed shortly during the RSCAD demo portion. Thirdly, the SCD editor is not responsible for binding input and output data signals in the simulation case that occurs in the component. On the other hand, data binding is also carried out in the ICT, which is more meaningful and convenient. Finally, the SCD editor is an integrated part of RSCAD. However, the ICD operates as a standalone application. Therefore, it can be controlled independently from RSCAD. These are some additional new features in GSEV7 and the ICT. In GSEV7 component, you can set a specific source MAC addresses for goose packets. This feature helps to emulate goose streams of specific devices in the network. In the ICT, it is easier to navigate between different panes and offers improved usability. The ICT provides a concise view of the project in the I.O. summary view. Next, I will talk about the Goose Analyzer. RSCAD Goose Analyzer is a software application used for testing and validation of Goose packet. Goose Analyzer supports both Goose and Routable Goose streams, open Wireshark captures, thorough packet inspection, and visual representation of information. You can configure the Goose Analyzer for a specific application by providing appropriate settings. The Goose Analyzer displays information of captured Goose messages such as communication details, data contents, here I am talking about data and quality items in a Goose message, information of last received Goose message, changes in Goose message such as state number, simulation bit, time allowed to live. The Goose Analyzer is able to publish pre-recorded Goose and Argoose messages for testing purposes. That concludes the presentation portion. Now, I will start the demonstration in RSCAD. I have now switched over into the RSCAT software. This demo systematically presents the process of simulating an IC61850 IED for Goose communication using GTNet GSE v7 component. GSE v7 new features support NOACO GTNet X2 hardware only. As you can see, the simulation case uses a simple power system model where a voltage source is supplied a dynamic PQ load at the end of a distribution feeder. A controllable circuit breaker connects the source to the feeder. Feeder is protected by a time over current relay referred to as the protection IED. The interface IED of the circuit breaker is referred to as the breaker IED. Here, Two IDs are simulated with respect to IC61850 independently using two GTNet GSC V7 components running on two GTNet X2 modules. The idea is to use IC61850 Goose communication to exchange information between these two simulated IDs. 
This figure shows information flow between various segments of the simulation. Here, the breaker ID includes simple controls which enables opening and closing of the circuit breaker based on internal push button from runtime. Or an external trip signal received from the protection ID via goose communication. Similarly, the protection ID receives the status of the breaker from the breaker ID in the form of a goose message. There exists a real Ethernet communication link between two GTNet X2 modules, which facilitates the exchange of goose messages. This figure demonstrates the connections and information flow between the ICT and GSEV7 components in the RSCAD draft. As I mentioned before, in the ICT, a project is the counterpart of a RSCAD FX draft case, which can contain multiple components. Here, there exists a one-to-one -one mapping between components in an ICT project and those in the corresponding RSCAD draft case based on their names. In addition, there exists a similar connection between IDs specified under a component in the ICT and those simulated by the corresponding GTNet GSE v7 component in draft. GTNet GSE v7 component in draft consumes a CID file created during the ICT project compile. The CID file carries SCL information for all the IDs which are to be simulated by the GTNet GSE v7 component. Here, the CID file name GT1CID is consumed by GTNet GSEV7 component with name GTNet1. GT1CID carries SCL configurations for the ID name PROT ID. The CID files are linked to the component via the IDA files using the component name as a key. The IDA file has the same name as the RSCAT FX draft file and is shared by all the GTNet GSEV7 component in draft case. The ICT also creates two other project related files referred to as IPA file and IA file which are entirely for the use of the ICT. The ICT program saves all the necessary information regarding a project in these two files and requires them to launch an existing project. Therefore, these two files should be included when sharing a RSCAD draft case for receiving party to be able to modify any of the GTNet GSCV7 components in the case. Inclusion of the CID and IDF files is sufficient just to compile and run a case. Next, I will show step to configure two GTNet GSCV7 components. First of all, we need to add two GSCV7 components to our draft case. Go to RSCAD master library and then select protection and automation. Under automation, you can find IC61850. If you select IC61850, you can find GSCV7 component. Drag and drop two GSEV7 component onto your draft. Name the first component as GTNet1, the second component as GTNet2. Then we need to launch the ICT. You can launch the ICT by right clicking on any GTNet GSEV7 component. Then select Edit IC61850 ICT project. This will launch the ICT and pop up a window and ask to specify your project name. You have to specify your project name. And it will create new project for you. Then go to Library. In main menu, select master templates, drag and drop two GTNet components into the project 
from components template. Then drag and drop a GTNet X2 GSE V7 ICT, this is template, to each GTNet GSC component. So here we have to specify ID name. My first ID name is prot ID. And second ID name is BRK ID. Then we need to create the IEC 61850 data model of two IDs. To create data model, expand IED, then click on data model. By default, the IED's data model contains a single LD with one LLL0 logical node instance and LPH3 logical node instance. Change the logical device instance in the IED model. So in here you can see logical device name is new device. So we need to rename this name to PROT and make sure to press enter key. Next search and select logical node class PTRC protection trip conditioning. And then scroll down and select the checkbox TR. And click create button. The logical node type definition PTRC will be added to the logical node templates manager. Drag and drop it into ID model to create an instant out of the PTRC logical node template. And click on build button to apply changes to the ID's data model. Now our data model is ready. Next go to data binding tab. This helps us to bind the necessary data attributes to RSCAT FS draft signal variables. Here, expand the data model tree of PTRC1 and go to data attribute PTRC TR general. Enable this data attribute by setting IO direction. So right now it is disabled. I'm going to select direction to output. And under IO name, you need to specify signal name. In this particular case, signal name is PTRC underscore TR. Then make sure to press the enter key. What we are doing here is binding the RSCAT FS draft signal PTRC TR to data attribute PTRC1 TR general in the data model of PROT IED. Then we are specifying it as an output of that ID, which means it's going out of the GTNet card. Repeat a similar procedure for GTNet2 component and add an XCBR that is circuit breaker logical node instance to the data model of the breaker ID. Bind data attributes XCBR1 post STVEL to draft signal post XCBR1 and XCBR1 post Q to draft signal post XCBR Q. Next, we need to create appropriate data sets. 
Go to Publishing section under Product ID. And then go to Datasets tab. Click on Add button to create a new dataset. Specify logical device where the dataset would reside. Enter appropriate name for the dataset. Then browse the ID data members and drag and drop PDRC1 TR general data attribute into the dataset members table. Next, hit the create button to complete the process. Next, we need to create a Goose control block to manage the publication of Goose messages containing the previously created dataset. Go to Goose control block tab. Click on add button to create a new Goose control block. Specify the logical device where the Goose control block would reside and Enter an appropriate Goose Control Block name. Then assign a dataset to the Goose Control Block. Specify communication and other configuration parameters such as destination multicast MAC address and App ID Finally, click on the Create button. Repeat a similar procedure to publish both XCBR, POST, STVAL and XCBR for skew from BRK ID in GTNet2 component. Next, we need to configure GTNet components to subscribe Goose Messages. In this demo, both IDs are subscribing to Goose Messages sent by the other. The prot ID is subscribing to the breaker status. XCBR1 post STVAL published by the breaker ID. The breaker ID is subscribing to the trip signal PTRC TR general published by the protection ID. Click on subscriptions under BRK ID. Click on add button to create a new input section. Specify the logical device and logical node instance. Here you can choose any logical node instance in the model. In this demo, I will place it in the XCPR1 logical node instance. Then expand the publishing section of the protection ID. Go down to the dataset selection and select it. Dataset members of this particular Goose message will appear on a table. Drag and drop the data attribute PTRC1TR general into the XREP table. Click on the Create button to complete the process. Subscribe inputs should also be bound to RSCAD FS draft by providing appropriate signal names. Go back to the data binding tab in the data model of BRKIED.
this is my subscribing id here you can see the xebr1 ln instant name is appended with an inputs to indicate that it contains subscribe goose input expand the xebr1 logical node instance you can see that xref entry has been added and the io direction is already set to input in the io name field enter prop id trip The corresponding value subscribed from Goose Messages will be available in RSCAD FS draft and runtime under this particular signal name. Repeat a similar procedure for GTNet1 that is protection ID to subscribe circuit breaker status and quality. Next, we need to specify CID file names. Click on the GTNet1 component in the Draft Component pane. Under the General tab, enter the component output SCL file name as GT1CID. Repeat same for GTNet2. Then click on project name in the component draft pane and go to access point tab. Enter the IP addresses of the corresponding GTNet X2 hardware model into the EAT IP field. Finally, go to project menu and compile the project. Compiling the ICT project generates the files, CID and IDF files that are necessary for RSCAD FX draft case compilation. Next, go to the RSCAD draft case and compile the RSCAD FS case. It should compile without any errors. I have now opened the runtime file in RSCAD FX and run the simulation. Circuit breaker is in the close position. We can monitor bus voltages, feeder currents, and load power consumption. Next, I'm going to trigger a trip signal by using trip signal control push button. The trip signal is received by the brake ID, causing it to open the circuit breaker. Consequently, the feeder currents and load power consumptions drop down to zero. Furthermore, the change of the position of the circuit breaker triggers a goose message from the brake ID, which is subscribed by the protection ID. Here we can observe subscribe circuit breaker status that shows the open position. This confirms that we were able to achieve closed loop goose message exchange. Next, I will demonstrate RSCAD goose analyzer that is used for testing and validation of goose packets. Load the goose analyzer by clicking on the 
chart 61850 boost analyzer icon from RSCAD FX toolbar. Click on the capture icon to start snipping network for boost packet. The Goose Publishers tab displays each Goose Publisher found on the network during capturing packet. Look for Goose Packet sent by GTNet1 that is protection ID with the aid of its destination MAC address. Here, the left side of the Publisher tab displays an overview of individual messages. Time, status number, sequence number, test flag that indicate if the Goose message is simulated and time allied to live. Right hand side of the Publisher tab provides more details of a Goose message. Goose details. Data details, last receive goose information, and activity and errors. Next, apply a trip signal by pressing trip signal control push button. We can see how it triggers a burst of Goose messages on the network. Here, there are two status changes in the trip signal. The value goes from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. As a result, there are two bursts of Goose messages for trip assert and reset. We can also observe status numbers, sequence numbers, and time allied to live fields of Goose packets. That concludes the demo portion. Thank you for your attention.